You know, it's rare that we have a succulent style plant that is so beloved outside of just people who love cacti and succulents, but aloe vera is one of those plants. So let's figure out how to grow it in today's video. Kevin Espiritu here from Epic Gardening, where it's my goal to help you grow greener thumb, and it's really a pretty simple plant to grow despite being very popular, and I think it gives some gardeners a lot of challenges. If it gives you a challenge, drop it down in the comments below. How many aloe plants have you killed before? I know, I'll be honest, I've killed probably two in the past, but once you understand how the plant likes to grow, what it does to survive, it's quite simple to grow. So that's why in this video, we're gonna go through the critical elements of its care, light, water, fertility, repotting, the type of pot you should use, how it propagates, and even at the very end of this video, and I'm really excited about this, I found an absolutely massive aloe leaf that we're gonna cut open and harvest. So stay tuned for the end of that. But without further ado, cultivate that like button for epic aloe leaves and let's get into the video. Our first category is light and temperature. If you're growing it indoors, which you certainly can, and I encourage you to do it if you don't have a lot of space, then give it as much light as you humanly can and potentially even supplement it with a grow light. You can put it right up next to a window. If this is my window right here, south or west or east facing, maybe a foot or two away is a really good idea. If you're growing it outdoors, however, I recommend shading it through the hotter parts of the day. And I know this both from research and also practice. This is an aloe that I just kind of left out and it was in full sun. And so you can see some of these lower tips have started to burn a little bit. Some of them actually, I cut one off lower here and it was getting kind of orangish reddish, which is a sign of a bit of sunburn. So you do want to avoid blasting it with sun. And then temperatures wise, it's a zone nine to 11 plant, but in layman's terms, that basically means keep it within a band of let's say mid fifties to low to mid 80 degrees. Anything outside of that, it's not going to have the best time. For soil and repotting, you can see I have it in the nursery pot that I bought it in and I've left it in that for quite some time. I don't remember exactly how long I've grown this, but it's been a while. And that's because generally speaking, aloe prefers being slightly root bound. However, I am going to repot it in this video. We're gonna use some Espoma Organic Cactus Mix, which is a fantastic mix. And again, that speaks to the type of soil that it wants, loose, well draining, and we're gonna swap it over to this terracotta. Why? Because terracotta is porous and it's actually going to wick even more water out. I suspect that some of the issues I've had with this as we've had heavy rains is that it's just kind of sat in this water and this plastic edge, even though there's drainage holes at the bottom, is still just retaining too much. So we're gonna repot it right now and hopefully it'll be in a happier home. Okay, unlike most times, I actually have something to keep it somewhat tidy here, but let's crack this open. And if you're trying to make your own cactus mix, you can use maybe one third compost, one third perlite or pumice, and one third of sand. That's a really good way to do it. But for me, I prefer at least, especially with cactus mix, to just buy it. And Espoma Organics is fantastic, so I highly recommend checking that out. We'll put a tiny bit here in the bottom, but since we're not repotting, we're not up potting it, we're just transplanting it into a different style of pot. I'm not gonna need to add too much soil. So, let's just take it out here. And you can see, if we look at the roots, it's slightly root bound, but not too much, but you can see it's pretty moist there. And so I'm glad that I'm repotting it. So what I'll do is I'll probably brush some of this off here. We're gonna get the root ball exposed a little bit. We'll loosen it slightly, nothing too crazy. Now let's see how it fits in this pot. It's gonna remain in this pot for probably, who knows, maybe the rest of its life, I have no idea. It'll be in here for quite some time. And we'll just fill around and we're good to go. Now that we've given our aloe a nice, new, beautiful home, it's gonna be a lot happier as it won't be sitting. It won't have wet feet pretty much ever now that the terracotta is in here and we have that nice cactus mix. We can talk a little bit about fertilizing. I'm not gonna do it right now because I just repotted it with soil that's full of fertility. But 
If you want to, you can use what I would recommend is a soluble liquid water soluble fertilizer instead of a granular one because of course it's going to get into the plant's system a lot quicker that way. You can do it twice, maybe three times throughout the year, maybe twice in spring, once in summer and taper it off as you go into fall. The thing that I particularly like about this one, the organic cactus from Espoma, is it's got an auto dose and so if I was to turn this upside down right now, it wouldn't just keep pouring, a specific amount would come out which is actually kind of nice. So you put that in your water and then you'd water that in. When propagating aloe, you're looking, let's pretend we'll call this one the mother, you're looking for what are called pups. And they're just offshoots that come off of the main stem. So I don't have any right now, otherwise I would love to show it to you. But it's very similar to other plants where you'll see little offshoots start to come out like this or like this. And what you would do is you might brush the soil away and you'd go in and you'd very gently pluck off that pup with as much stem material as possible. And because it's a succulent, you're going to propagate it in much the same way as you would propagate other succulents where you'd have that little piece of stem material with the offshoot and you'd lay that out and you could let it dry for a little bit and then you would pot it back up into some soil or you could pot it back up immediately but really you just want to let it callous so if you're going to pot it back up immediately you wouldn't want to water it but otherwise you can just endlessly propagate from your mother aloe. I don't know about you guys but the moment is here we're going to chop into big mama aloe but if you want to just harvest from your main aloe and you don't have this big kahuna like I do right here, what you would do is you would come through with some scissors or some snips like this and you could come and just cut half of a leaf, a chunk of a leaf, or as I like to do, cut the entire leaf. First of all, I think it looks better. Second of all, I don't know, I don't want to leave like a, a random open wound on this thicker part of the leaf. I would just come through, for example, right here, this one's kind of weak looking and a little lame, so boom, and then I've got a little bit right there but we have to do it. We have to do Big Mama Aloe chopping and squeezing montage. So it's pretty incredible, right? I mean, this is probably one of the biggest leaves I've ever seen. Let's just give this a squeeze. I can't even get it out, but man, there's just so much gel in there. And you might be wondering, hey, Kevin, you left watering out, and I didn't. The reason why I kept it to this part of the video is to show you the anatomy of the plant. When you understand things like this, then you figure out how to water on your own. If you had all of this inside of you, and this is extremely, extremely water retentive, why would you need a lot of water? So what you're gonna see in an aloe plant when you overwater is it's gonna start to sog out. It'll be a little squishy because you're basically bursting the interior of this. And when you underwater, it's gonna start using this. And when it does that, it's gonna start shriveling and wrinkling a bit, kind of like your fingers in a jacuzzi, albeit for different reasons. So. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. This was a lot of fun. This massive, massive aloe leaf. I would love to know what you guys think about this. What, what should I do with this? I have no idea. I have so much aloe. But until next time, good luck in the garden. Keep growing, and I'll see you on the next video.